Chicago Bears are at home for New Year's Eve this week. They welcome the Atlanta Falcons, who still have some life left, as faint as it might be. They'll be celebrating with a much-needed win to stay in the playoff chase. Falcons need help, but they have to take care of business first. They handed the keys to their offense back to Taylor Heineke last week. He delivered in a game Atlanta was underdogs, 229 yards passing, a touchdown with no picks, a rating near 100. End zone, got him in. It's Pitts. It's a touchdown. What a start for Heineke and the Falcons. Main thing Heineke did well, make sure to put the ball in the hands of Bijan Robinson. He led the team in targets with 10, 50 yards receiving. This is where Robinson is so dangerous in the open field. Robinson hit for six a run on 12 carries to 72 yards. Look at the speed of Bijan Robinson trying to break it into the open field. Atlanta's run game also got a nice outing from Tyler Algier. He's had a quiet season, but last week, 69 yards, 7.7 a carry, and a touchdown. This blocking Algier running. Big run for Algier into the end zone. The Chicago defense they face has played running backs well in 2023, holding them to 3.6 a run, fourth lowest. Held James Conner to 3.8 yards per carry. He was a five a run dude prior to the game. Conner the carry and wrapped up in the backfield. Tossing him for a loss back to the 41. Chicago has not played backs as pass catchers well though. A 107.5 rating allowed to the position. Only two teams have given up a higher one. Bears allowed a 97.5 rate to Kyler Murray last week and look at that. They gave up 12 receptions to Connor and running back Amari DeMarcado, 107 yards combined. Murray, Connor, wide open, down the sideline, into the end zone. Heineke relied on tight ends a week ago as well. 10 targets to Kyle Pitts and Jonu Smith combined, 81 total yards. Witness, and then you see the offensive line just rolling down there, getting a great block, man. Falcons offense last five games has played ping pong, though. Scored 24 one week, then just 13, then 25 then 7, then 29, stacked against a Bears defense that's held its opponents under 21 points, four straight games now. Keep it alive, gotta get it thrown. Looking for more, and it's incomplete. Bears offense now, it would make good Pong partners with Atlanta's O. They've been doing the same thing with their point totals. Like Atlanta, their most recent showing, a smashing 27, fueled by its run game. Khalil Herbert over 120 yards and a touchdown versus the Cardinals. Keep in mind, though, that's his first good outing since week five. And and what a wide open hole and getting big personnel to run the ball. You can tell what they want to do. Justin Fields hit for 97 rush yards last week, 10.8 a carry, a TD. Well, I love these just rollout runs, design quarterback runs. Just think that's such a weapon. Bears ran for 250 yards a season high. Falcons defense they face, also very tough on running backs. Not too tough on mobile quarterbacks, though. Atlanta's defense comes in off a nice outing as well, held Indy to 10 points, have held teams under 16 points, and four of their last five. Bryce Young lost the football, that was loose on the deck. Falcons have held passing attacks to under 200 yards, four straight as well. Minshew, deep ball, Pierce, it is Jesse Bates. And last week, their pass rush, which is not always a strength, cracked an Uncle Rico sack sixer. Minshew. Fields is usually one of the easier quarterbacks to bag, but he only took one sack versus Arizona, only got hit once. It did not translate to big passing numbers, though. 170 yards, a 71.5 rating, one touchdown, one pick. Here's Fields floating it for the end zone, and it's intercepted! Arizona secondary is not strong either. Fields hasn't ended a game with a plus 90 rate in four straight games. Two games left now to make his case for 2024. Atlanta, two games left to make its case for 2023. Let everyone know how it plays out in the comments section. Panel of 10 will do the same on the screen. Happy New Year, everybody.